All right, guys, 2020 Corvette versus 2020 Supra. Here we go. Now, before we get into this video, let's go over some of the boring stuff. Now, the 2020 Supra starts at around $60,000, and Toyota only came out with 1,500 units. The 2020 Corvette comes with an eight-speed dual clutch versus the Toyota Supra, which comes with an eight-speed automatic that's not a dual clutch. Definitely a win for the Corvette. Simply put, the DCT shifts gears faster and better than any human can. Oh yeah? I'll show you what fast shifting looks like. DCT can suck one. You got nothing on that DCT. Hold on, you guys want to see that again? But... It's still a Supra. Corvette has 495 horsepower versus the Supra that has only 335. Now you guys might be wondering, Adam, why do you have your Evo in the background? Well, it's JDM, so I figured I was talking about the Supra, so it just makes sense. So here she is. If you guys are new here, this is my 2004 Mitsubishi Evo 8, and yeah, this is her, JDM. The Supra's like half BMW, half Toyota. It might have the same transmission, it might have the same motor. I'm kind of confused because I'm like, is it a German car? Is it an American car? We don't really know. Now the previous Mark IV Supra did the quarter mile in 13.4 to 13.5 seconds. Uh, uh, uh. Man, can I ask you a question? I want to get a, a certificate of authenticity. Absolutely. And I'm going to eBay this. No one will buy. Well, oh, someone will. They will use it as a sex <laughs> item. <laughs> Somebody needs a. Um, Text group versus the brand new Mark V, which does it in 12.5. One second, Toyota, one, one second and a few miles per hour faster. To me, it took you 20 years. Why? In 20 years, you were only able to cut a second off the quarter mile, which in this day and age, like you can go out and buy an Audi RS3 and run 10 second quarter miles. Now I know it's a totally different car, totally different platform, but in today's day and age, that's, that's just not that fast. Now I think the tuning ability of the new Supra is going to be awesome compared to the Corvette. I'm sure you can do bolt-ons on the Corvette and cams and all that fun stuff. I think there's a lot of power potential out of the Supra and I know lots of people are probably going to swap a 2J in it because it's a Supra and it didn't come with a 2J so people are going to be mad. Now for the Corvette. I think the Corvette is one of the coolest cars to ever come out. My only problem with the Corvette is it's going to be mass produced. Everybody is ordering one. It starts at 60,000 or a little bit under, and now everybody and their mom is going to go out and buy one. Every single person is gonna go out, they're gonna buy the C8 Corvette, and you're gonna see all the dads, all the Grandpa Joes, it's your local cars and coffee. It's gonna be a cool car, but there's gonna be so many of them that it's going to become very not impressive, they're going to become repetitive, it's gonna be very hard to make your stand out. Now Toyota was very smart in what they did because they only released 1500 launch editions to kind of build the hype of the Mark V Supra, so not everybody's gonna have. Personally, I think the Corvette looks, looks good. The front end, the side angle looks great, but my biggest complaint is the back end of that car looks like a Camaro. Now for the people out there that don't think it looks like a Camaro, you're wrong. It look it looks so similar. It's like, am I buying a Corvette or am I buying a Camaro? I'm glad they made it affordable, but you're gonna see moms, dads, grandmas, everybody is gonna be driving a Corvette. They're not gonna be that cool, and it sucks because you can't get it in a manual. Now I know there's a lot of people, oh, if it's not manual, it's not right. I think the dual clutch is gonna be awesome on the track. It's just not the same feel as a manual. For previous generation Corvettes like the C5, the C6, C7, I think it's really gonna help the value of the manual stay up. I'm super curious to see what happens to the price tag on the C7 and the C6, because the C7, there are so many C7s that are still sitting on lots that Chevy can't sell. I mean, when you see a Super going down the road, everybody's gonna be like, hey bro, is that a Super, bro? Oh my God, is a Super in the back? Dude, is this a Super? Whoa! 
Is that a Supra? Dude, is that a Supra? Now, I have seen some renderings of some twin turbo wide body C8 Corvettes, and they look absolutely mental. One of my biggest issues, which I know everybody else hates about the Supra, is is it a BMW or is it a Toyota? It, you, you can't mix JDM and German. Like, has anybody thought that through? Is it is it Jer, Jer JDM? Like, what is it, Toyota? What what did you make? And the Supra's a front engine or rear wheel drive car, and for the first time ever, instead of the C8 being a front engine or rear wheel drive car, it is a mid-engine. And I know the Corvette's getting a lot of flack because it kind of looks like a Ferrari. Now, instead of comparing the Corvette to the Supra, you should probably be comparing it more to like a 458 because they're both V8s, they're both naturally aspirated, they're both mid-engine, and they're both rear-wheel drive. Too soon, too soon. Supra doesn't really look like anything else. It doesn't look like a BMW. It kind of looks Supra-ish. The Corvette looks like a Camaro and or a Ferrari. I'm like, what? What were they trying to do? The rear end looks like a Camaro, but from the front and the side, it looks like a Ferrari. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna like that. If you buy one, don't spec it in red because then every single person that you drive by that doesn't know cars is gonna be like, look, 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 a Ferrari. It's a Ferrari. It's a shit box. So here's the thing for all of you guys, buying a 2020 Corvette, debadge it, and count the amount of times that everybody walks up to you and calls it a Ferrari or a supercar. I mean, it's gonna have supercar performance, zero to 60 in under three seconds, crazy crazy fast car but it, it's a corvette like at the end of the day it, uh, it's just tough because so many people are, that don't know cars are gonna see it and think it's some super exotic car but it's really just a sixty thousand dollar corvette I know I'm hating on the Corvette a lot. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's a cool car. I'm curious to see what it's like in January when people actually get them delivered and the car comes out. I really wanna know what do you guys think if it was your choice, which car would you take? I know personally I would go with the Supra because I'm a JDM guy and JDM is just where my heart's at. I've got an Evo, I've got a Civic. I would take a Supra. A lot of you guys are gonna be like, you're not even credible, dude. You drive a slow Civic. I know, I get it. I drive an Evo and nobody cares about Evos and I drive a Civic, which nobody cares about either. But if you guys wanna follow along with my build on the Civic and the Evo, you should do that because the build is commencing. Big Turbo is on the way for the Evo, for those that don't know. So that should be very exciting. And the Civic's probably gonna stay pretty stock motor-wise for now. Should I just save up? And should I get a Supra or a C8 Corvette? I think a Supra would be pretty cool. But seriously, what do you guys think? Are the Corvette prices gonna just tank on the C6s and the C7s? Honestly, I see the C6, Z06, and the ZR1s staying pretty similar in price to where they're at now. But sadly, unless it's the new C7 ZR1, I see the prices tanking on the Stingrays, the Z06s, because they're just not gonna be in demand anymore. I think the manuals might stay decent just because there's not a manual on the brand new one. But let me know, what do you guys think? Is the price gonna tank or is it gonna stay about the same? The steering wheel on the Corvette, I think the interior is pretty cool. I like how everything is kind of facing the driver. But that steering wheel, like, I, I can't stand it. Now, I know I've hated on the Corvette a lot, but I do think it's awesome that both cars are coming in right around $60,000. At $60,000, I mean, it's still an expensive car, but there's going to be a lot more people that can afford them. Because when you're looking at a lot of cars like Nissan GTRs, NSXs, McLaren, like, supercars, they're, they're not obtainable for most people. But the fact that these cars are 60 grand, so many people are gonna be able to afford them, which is super cool, because you will get such a high performing car for the money. Now, in order to drive the new Corvette, it is mandatory that you have high white socks, you have your cargo pants, and you have your Levi's t-shirt, okay? That is the recipe for success when you drive a Corvette. Wait, 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 I almost forgot. Future Adam here. You cannot forget the New Balance shoes. 
So I'm gonna stop rambling about the 2020 Corvette and the 2020 Supra. Let me know down in the comments below what car would you guys take? Personally, I'd like to be different. Everybody's saying the C8 Corvette wins, but if it was me because I'm a JDM guy at heart, even though this one's not that JDM, I would still take the Supra because one, I think you'll get more clout from the Supra because every YouTuber out there is gonna have a Corvette and it's a Supra, dog. So let me know what you guys would take. Let me know if you guys are getting a Toyota Supra or a 2020 Corvette. And let me know what you guys wanna see next video. I do have a turbo on the way for the Evo. I am super excited to get it installed. I also have some coilovers coming. I have a ton of stuff in the works for the Evo. So if you guys are excited to follow along with that build, subscribe to the channel if you guys like videos like this. Let me know down in the comments below. I like making these, it's fun to film. So hope you guys have a great day and I will catch you guys in the next video.